Hi there, uh, I thought I'd make another video uh, showing you how you can use ChatGPT Plus and the Notable plugin to clean up your data and specifically how to deal with annoying typos in your data set. And what I'm using for this demonstration is a data set that I worked on when I was a reporter at the Vancouver Sun on auto crimes. Um, and you can see right here what we have is we've got the category of the auto crime, the year the auto crime took place, the city it took place at, the latitude and longitude coordinates, the number of incidents that took place at that location in that year. Um, now we've got some uh, city data here, but the problem is the city data is about 95% clean and about 5% riddled with typos. And we can actually take a quick look here and I can show you with a simple filter what I'm talking about. If I look at British Columbia's biggest city, Vancouver, down here, we've got some data for Vancouver, but also a whole whack load of annoying and weird and woolly uh, spelling mistakes and typos. Similarly with uh, BC's second largest city, Surrey, you can see a bunch of um, typos there as well. Now, um, most of the data is properly formatted. And if I do just a quick little pivot table here, and I show you what the most common cities are in the data set. You can see that the vast majority of the data uh, for these major cities, Vancouver, Surrey, Burnaby, Langley, Richmond, Coquitlam, and Kelowna is properly typed out. But then we just have a lot, dozens and dozens of um, misspelled uh, cities and I, and I want to clean up that data and we're going to see if uh, ChatGPT uh, and the Notable plugin can help me. So I've uh, uploaded that data to my uh, project in Notable and if you're wondering how do I use the Notable plugin in ChatGPT, um, I walk through all of that in my first video. But uh, here I'm just going to dive right in. I'm going to say I have a data set in Notable called Auto Crime hyphen small.csv with a lot of typos in the city field. Can you help me fix them? Uh, and as before, I'll, I'll do some editing of this as we go along because often uh, you need to wait a little bit for um, ChatGPT to work and I don't really have to sit there while it's doing all the slow stuff. Okay, so ChatGPT says it can help me with that. It comes up with a plan here. We're gonna load the data set into a pandas data frame identify the unique city names in the data set, use a fuzzy matching algorithm to identify potential typos and suggested corrections, and apply the corrections to the data set. And this is gonna do that uh, using something called a fuzzy matching library called Fuzzy Wuzzy, um, which um, I had not heard about uh, before I started playing around uh, with this, but uh, it sounds like it could be helpful. Okay, so it's asking me, it says there might be an issue running with the cell. Can I please check the notebook and see if there are any error messages displayed? And I don't see any, so I see say, nope. I don't see any error messages. Uh, and this is one of the things that I've uh, discovered can sometimes be a little bit helpful when uh, ChatGPT is acting a little bit weird with the Notable plugin is, is actually having that um, notebook open and, and you can kind of re rerun it uh, as you go uh, just to make sure it's capturing everything. Because uh, sometimes if it's hung on a particularly difficult task, it might just be that it's taking a while to run. So uh, sort of understanding why uh, things might be taking a little bit longer than you expected. Okay, and so it's showing the first few rows of the data set. Okay, and it says the cell is successfully run, identify the unique city names in the data set. As we can see, there are indeed a number of typos and variations in the city names. And it says, for example, Vancouver appears as, and then it's giving me some of the many, many examples of how Vancouver has been misspelled uh, in the data set. And again, just a reminder that these little um, boxes here, you can actually open them up and sort of see um, the actual request that's being made to Notable and what uh, Notable is sending back to ChatGPT. Uh, it's sort of a two-stage process here where ChatGPT kind of does the thinking and then it sends the request to Notable and Notable sends something back. And so it, it's, it's helpful to sort of understand how those two parts of the process are working. Uh, so now it's saying next we'll use a fuzzy matching algorithm to identify potential typos and suggest corrections. We'll use the fuzzy wuzzy library for this. Uh, the library uses Levenstein distance to calculate the differences between sequences, in this case, city names. 
Okay, and it says that for simplicity, it's going to assume that the correct city names are Vancouver, Burnaby, Richmond, Surrey, Langley, Coquitlam, and Kelowna. And those are uh, the one, two, three, four, five, seven cities. <laughs> I almost said six, seven cities um, that are, were at that top of that list that we have, and 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 for which there are thousands of, of correct responses. So, um, if I would dug into here, I could probably guess that it, it sort of looked at what the most common names were in the data um, and decided to do it that way. Um, it says the function has been successfully created and tested. It correctly identified Vancouver as the closest match to Vancouver. Now let's apply this function to the city column. We'll create a new column, corrected city, to store the corrected names. That way we can compare the original and corrected names. Say still running, still running. Uh, while we wait for the process to complete, let's discuss the next steps. Once we have the corrected city names, uh, we can replace the original city names with the corrected ones. And, and this again, I think, is a, is a good situation where having the workbook open can be quite helpful because I have noticed with some of these more complicated uh, calculations, it can just take notable a bit of time to run the um, the calculations. And so sometimes you'll see, yeah, so you'll see here, right, this is still running, this this function. Um, and, and sometimes what, you, what, what can be helpful is actually to, to wait until that's done before you put in the next part of the step, because otherwise you're just going to get a lot of these. The cell is still running, the cell is still running, the cell is still running. Um, also, uh, and I mentioned this in one of the other videos, one of the things that just keep in mind is this is a very kind of new tool and, and how ChatGPT works with Notable is still pretty fresh. And so sometimes um, you'll get error messages. And if you do, you can regenerate the response to try again. Sometimes things will just stop midway through and you can just type, please continue or continue, depending on how polite you are <laughs> to, to let it pick up where it left off. So, so there's definitely a lot of sort of rough edges to how this process uh, works and, and to just be a little bit patient with that. So I'm just going to wait here until this stops executing. And then I'll, I'll give ChatGPT the next uh, set of instructions. Okay, so uh, careful watchers that notice the time. It's now 10 minutes later. Uh, I was sitting here watching this little ChatGPT thinky button go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in it. And it struck me that it, it was taking a lot longer than I remembered it taking when I when I tried this once before. And so I actually just re-ran the page um, and it showed me that it actually ran in uh, two minutes, 50 seconds. So it did take a little bit of time, but not as much time as, as I thought. And, and this is something that I've now stumbled across, which is, probably helpful to know about is that uh, when you're waiting on something to complete, you actually should probably occasionally refresh your page because it looks like at least sometimes it'll kind of get stuck in the view of, of it thinking when it actually is done thinking. So so it's done thinking now and I can go back to uh, ChatGPT um, and it's asking me what I want to do after we're done. So uh, once we have the corrected city names, we can replace the original city names with the corrected ones in the data set. After that, we can save the clean data set to a new CSV file or overwrite the existing one depending on your preference. So I'm going to say, please save the cleaned data set to a new CSV file, but keep the city and what do they call it? Corrected city fields so that I can review the work myself. Okay, now this is something else that I've, I've noticed. Um, oh, okay, so it's actually, sometimes I, I, I found that um, ChatGPT gets confused and forgets that it can actually ask Notable to do things. And so sometimes you have to literally say, do it. Now in this case, it was showing me the code, but then it was just saying, uh, I'll add this code to the notebook once the fuzzy matching process is complete. Let's check the status. It says it's checked the status, it's corrected. Um, it's been added to the data frame. Here are the first few rows of the data with the correct city names. Okay, and so it's, it's gonna now save the data frame to a new CSV file. Uh, it says it had some difficulty doing that. It says it's now been created. Um, when I've done this before, it usually appears right here on the left-hand side, uh, or you can go to the main um, project page and download it from there, but I don't actually see the saved file. So I'm not gonna tell Notable that. I can't seem to see the auto crime small clean CSV file in my project. Can you please try again, making sure to save it to this project. I'm just gonna grab the project URL here. We'll see if that fixes it. Okay, it set the default project to the one I specified. Now let's try saving the clean data set again. 
I'll add another cell to the notebook to do this. Okay, so it says it's there. Let's take a look. Oh, here it is, auto crime hyphen small hyphen cleaned. So sometimes you just gotta ask twice. <laughs> so I'll click on this. And I'll go over here. Or I think I also go over here. Download it. It's a CSV file. Okay, and we can see that we've now got our city and our corrected city. Filter. So our, remember our city fields has a whole bunch of inconsistencies in it. Corrected city, just the seven cities um, that we wanted to focus on. Burnaby, Coquitlam, Kelowna, Langley, Richmond, Surrey, and Vancouver. So did a pretty good job of cleaning it. Now, I have to say, um, in full transparency that um, I originally tried to do this um, exercise using uh, a bigger data set um, that had all the cities in British Columbia in it. And uh, ChatGPT and the plugin, uh, the notable plugin, uh, were not able to do this very successfully. <laughs> they kept on getting stuck. They started ending up doing a fuzzy matching, but like comparing it. Um, to itself. At one point, it was telling me that Souk, um, S-O-O-K-E, uh, was a typo for Vancouver. Um, and and I, I think the problem here is that some of these real cities in British Columbia had such a tiny number of auto crimes that it was harder for uh, ChatGPT and Notable uh, to be able to make that distinction. So I, I filtered it down to just the big cities and some of the misspellings of those big cities, and it seemed to be able to do it much better. Um, and I think this is something to keep in mind that, you know, this is not perfect. Uh, you know, ChatGPT is pretty amazing. The Notable plugin is pretty amazing, um, but it doesn't do things perfectly. It often requires kind of a careful critical eye, like, is this doing what I think it's doing? Um, you know, is it making the correct decisions? You know, the more you know about data analysis and data visualization, the more you're going to catch its rough edges. Um, but I think it's still pretty impressive. And, and, and we can already see just in the short period of time that ChatGPT has been around and even the shorter period of time, that the notable plugin's been around, that it's gotten better. Um, but you may have to try uh, multiple different steps. Um, you might have to um, fiddle around with things. Um, in this case, uh, I, I sort of started with pretty generic requests about how do I clean up my data, and it suggested some Python libraries, and, and there was a fair bit of, of trial and error. So, so you should expect that going in, not to mention just sort of the technical errors, I think, with how busy this tool is where things time out. Um, you sometimes need to regenerate the response. Uh, sometimes you need to wait for the notable uh, notebook to do its calculation. So, you know, realizing that we're in early days here and uh, things are not going to necessarily run perfectly, but still that uh, this can help you out with some of your data problems. And I think what this suggests about typos in particular is that it's going to be most successful when you've got a small number of correct spellings in your data uh, of which there are a, num a, 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 high, a large volume, and then uh, you can use the fuzzy matching to correct it. Uh, I also wanted to correct something else um, that I mentioned early on. I, I made an assumption that uh, ChatGPT and Notable had decided that the seven cities here were the ones that they should treat as the real cities um, because they were the most common in my data, because I knew that they were the most common in my data. But what's interesting about uh, the Notable notebooks is that it does allow you to sort of uh, review the work. And when I looked at the little code snippets, and again, I'm not a Python expert, but you know, it's, it's, it's straightforward enough what's going on here. Um, I actually was not able to find anything here that suggested that it actually grouped um, the largest cities. Now, I might be missing something, but uh, I don't think so. And, and what's interesting about that is it actually suggests that the way in which ChatGPT in concert with the Notable plugin decided on these seven cities was not because they were the most common in the data, but because it knows those are British Columbia cities. Uh, and again, I think this is one of the, the powerful things. I mean, th they could have come to this <laughs> conclusion using a, a more simple summing function, but again, it shows that one of the things that's, that, that's powerful about ChatGPT and the Notable plugin is that ChatGPT knows other things about the world and it can it can use that knowledge in trying to make sense of your data. So it knows uh, what some of the common cities are in British Columbia. And so when it's trying to clean up a data set of typos in city names, it doesn't have to treat it as if it's a completely 
unknown uh, list of values and it has to make some guesses about which ones are correct and which ones are incorrect, it can say, hey, I know Vancouver is a city. I know that Vancouver or Vancouver VR is not a real city. And so I'm gonna treat the real city like a real city and the other ones as typos of that real city. So again, I continue to be really uh, impressed with what um, ChatGPT and Notable can do, but definitely with the caveat that you need to be careful um, because sometimes it makes mistakes um, and you need to sort of really watch uh, what it's doing and check its work as best you can. Okay, uh, again, I'll, I'll as I discover new things um, with uh, ChatGPT, I'll, I'll add more videos. Uh, if you wanna get some basic information on how to set this up in ChatGPT, how to use the Notable plugin, please refer to my uh, first video. Okay, thanks very much.